Welcome back to Two Homers and a Realist. It is the off season. This is the time we relax. We sit back, get to know the wife and kids once again. But no, we're pretty engaged. We're talking about all this stuff. We're deep in the heart of recruiting. I'm Steve. I'm Connor. Lucas. Jay. So we are indoors. We're not getting to enjoy an outside breeze because it's too wet and cold here in the depths of January. We just got done with the college football season, guys. The national championship wrapped up a couple of weeks ago. Um, Michigan was the big winner. Will they have an asterisk by them forever? Um, I don't know. I guess that remains to be seen. I don't think that actually is going to happen. If there's anything, I don't think it's going to be as severe as trying to strip them of the title or something. I, I'm sure there's some. Uh, maybe that school down south um, might give them uh, some some grief forever, saying that they didn't actually win the title. But otherwise, I think they clearly established themselves as one of the best teams. But as soon as that happened, we saw some dominoes fall. Three of the four college football playoff teams don't have their head coach anymore. So, and the only one that still does is the Texas Longhorns. Bill Texas. So Harbaugh out today and made it official that he's going to L.A. He's taking his um, talents to the West Coast Beach. He's going to join Lincoln Riley. <laughs> and, for now. Uh, for now. For now. Uh, and I still, that was now. the job he might actually get. Yeah, he didn't. He's still. He's still does he get to still, you know, him and his kids could still see palm trees. <laughs> it's true. He could probably stay in his house. Right. And he could have probably worked his magic with Justin Herbert, <laughs> who's been a disappointment, in my opinion, in the NFL for all the – all the excitement people had when he first came to the league. I don't think he's really done anything. I don't know why they were excited when he first came into the league. I, I, think I don't know. in college. Yeah, well, we'll see. Harbaugh's headed out there, and um, Saban obviously retired, so that's big news for us in the SEC. Um, and that's, that's kind of disappointment because I wanted to see Saban come to Norman. I wanted to get a shot at him. I, um, I, but all in all, it's probably a good thing for OU. It definitely is a diminishment in terms of your competition, probably, relatively speaking, and everything considered. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But definitely from the standpoint of Alabama, it is a lessening of Alabama. And then Washington loses their head coach to Alabama. So they, they're they in a shakeup. Everything in college football is getting shook up. What do you guys think about all this? Yeah, I mean, I think it's... Uh, it- all of that is, I mean, Saban was a shock for me. Like you said, Steve, I was excited for him to come to Norman. Uh, a Saban-led team here would have been fun, but it's still Bama coming to Norman. It'll be a, it'll be a fun, competitive game for sure. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see Washington and what they do to respond to losing that this coach who had them on a trajectory. That's right. Uh, had him well. had him in a game. I mean, Jay, I think you said it last pod. The the smallest blue chip ratio to ever reach a national championship and, and would have been one of the, or would have been the smallest to win it had they actually been able to beat Michigan. Um, Which didn't. They didn't, yep. Blue I mean, chip ratio held up. It, it did, and uh, but they they hemorrhaged players after that loss. Um, so I, you're going to see Washington turn into a, maybe even a lesser version of what TCU was this year after their Cinderella story run that they had uh, a couple years ago. So uh, it's interesting. It's I think you add an NIL into the whole thing, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. But it just makes everything so much more interesting with where these players end up landing and and the uh, the state. It's it's unfortunate. I feel bad for Washington's fan base. I think it was, mm-hmm. I think out of the whole shakeup, Arizona they, too. They're paying yeah. for it the most. Yeah, in Arizona, we'll we'll talk about them as well. But Washington's going to pay a lot more than in other schools because of this uh, this coaching loss. So sucks for them, but um, I, kind of the nature of the game at this point. If I never hear the word portal or NIL again, I would be a happy man because I'm so sick of it already, and it's only January, and the season just ended Is three weeks the ago. Old man rant? I'm, I'm already sick of it. Like I'm, I'm going to lose my fervor for college football if it continues at the pace of of the last two seasons, it has been, it, it's just relenting on every day it pops up. Oh, this guy's got on the portal. Oh, we're going after this guy. But nope, this other this other team putting all their money in for this one season. You know, Ole Miss, we're going to spend millions and millions of dollars to pluck all these guys from around the country. And nobody else is going to get them, you know, 
we're, they're just all going to essentially like three places. Is it just hard it's, for you to follow? What is it that's that's so disruptive? Dis, dis- it's not the following. It's, it's just it's not my college football. And well, I mean, how is it different than recruiting? Isn't it recruiting? No, because these kids, a like a Caden Green, are literally just jumping for the money. And but they've always been jumping for the money. Now, now that not from this, not when so, the transfer so portal is, didn't wait, exist. Wait, wait, wait. it's not just in IL. It's no. a portal. I I'm still with the. If you want to go to another school, you got to sit your damn year out. I'm sick of this playing at three different places in three years. It's stupid, and it's not college football. This isn't the NFL so on a single year contract at a school for so many years. Should they have to sit out? They're not. They're not on the same level. Coaching and playing are two completely. You're right. One of them adds value. They're two completely different things. So, it just seems unfair to me that you're gonna you're gonna tell the players they've got to commit to something when they're 18 years old or 17 years old. And they're bound by it, and their whole world can be disrupted. Like the Alabama, all they're doing are. is sitting out a year. I'm not. I'm not saying they can never play again. You, if you go to That's Alabama, it's hopefully a year. There's a whole bunch of jobs that have non-compete. Yeah, there's tons non-compete. of jobs that non-compete clauses. Yeah, they get paid for that. Well, so are these kids. They're going to go. Yeah, now they're getting paid for it. So yeah, okay, I'm fine with if, that. If, if you want to put them under contract, if they go, say that it's a non-compete, and here's what we're paying you for. If it. they go from Bama and your coach leaves, and you go to Ohio State, you sit out a year. You're still getting paid. You're getting a scholarship, and you're probably still going to get an NIL. Scholarships deal with are worthless. Scholarships worthless. Uh, you, NIL maybe. You're probably still going to get an I, NIL deal, even though so you're sitting on the bench. Yeah, if you're being probably not. If you're being a player, you are. It so, bring you because if they'll know you have to sit, they'll know you. They'll know you'll be sitting. So. Well, maybe. And, and they know that you're not going where the next year because you're locked in. Maybe, but that's assuming a lot. That's assuming you can get there. But if you're willing to pay them for it and they're willing to accept that deal, I'm not opposed to that. So is the NFL not structured properly either for you in your eyes? Oh, no, I think the NFL is more properly structured than college. Well, they can't leave every year. No, they can't. They're under contract and they get paid for that. Yeah. So I'm not saying we need a, necessarily a free agency world. I'm not saying that the current world's perfect. But I don't want to throw the college, baby out well, with the back. The college football world isn't sustainable with a completely open free agency all the time. How come? Because we're going to lose Lucas? No, just in general. I hear you. Well, it's huge, but <laughs> it's just like the, I mean, the NFL couldn't be that way. It could. You can't. You can't build a team. You can't build a roster like that. Well, they're building rosters like that, though. It is happening. I I don't disagree that it's disruptive and maybe the the isn't sustainable to me is a a jump we don't know that that's the case i don't think it's optimal but to i don't want to go to the extreme of you can't have a a transfer portal when i don't and i think nil is is i don't think you're necessarily advocating for no nil no there just needs to be a better time to do it and and more structure and some sort of boundary that you have in place of how often how many times when well, and you're, when, you're moving into as well. I mean, I, I think th- there is a middle ground somewhere. And whether it's some sort of contractual um, obligation that's that's signed as part of your national letter of intent with years or, or something like that, I don't, you get into a really kind of sticky area because Steve, to your point, I mean, with coaches, you get, you can get bought out. You can, you can move kind of fluidly at will, uh, assuming that all of the the things are in the right place to do so. I don't know how you'd work that out with, with college. Maybe you add NIL, NIL to the contract to say forfeiture and, you know, some sort of, I don't know, remedy if you lose or break or leave or break the contract itself. Um, I do think there's a middle ground to Lucas where you're saying you want, you want just the extreme back to how it was, sit out a year, this is how it has to be, and steer to what you're saying where there should just be, it, it is an open market. Because I do I do think the the power, it's a good thing to have the players to give the players power. that They've been lacking it for so many years. There has to be some sort of buying power with the players to, to get the product that they're delivering, um, but not at the extent of what we've seen. Like, it is... It, it is such a wild, wild west out there right now. And I do think there's going to be some balance and, and return to an equilibrium at some point. I don't think the the way things are, I don't think it's sustainable. Um, Jay, you mentioned it before the pod, it's speculation, but like with, with programs like Ole Miss, 
all these guys are bringing in funded by a collective of what we think are, is a fan base with not a ton of resources, that in and of itself is not sustainable, right? So if you have resources for one year, you don't have a fan base that can commit to that on a yearly basis. That's gonna that's not gonna happen every single year. So I don't know. There's got to be some sort of middle ground. It, it is it is crazy well, right now what we've to, seen. Think of how silly it is to, you know, at some point we're all gonna look back on this and be like, man, I can't believe that, um, a game that has billions in revenue, individual schools that have hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue, and all the fans were sending in their twenty bucks to get players. Like we're gonna look back at it like. What the f were we doing? I think you're on to like great what is point. what is that? Like yeah. what are we talking about? I think it's really bizarre, and and that's something I would then side with what your your sentiment, Lucas, too, in in saying there is something messed up about a world where the team can't have any direct control over how the players get paid. You can't pay for performance when clearly that's exactly what we're trying to do. It. It's like it's set up to fail. So I'll, I'll grant you, the uh, when you say it's not sustainable, Jay, you're, you've got a good point that the way they've not structured it with the, the seemingly Wild West type of let's see how it plays out, I think that was a design by the NCAA. I think they wanted it to be disruptive. I don't think they wanted this to work. So I think they wanted it to be as bad as it could be. And that's why they've instituted it the way it is. And I also think it's probably at the behest of big powers who want it certain ways. And they don't like this. The big powers don't like this because they didn't have to do this shit in the past. They actually would just pay players under the table and then they've got all the other resources. They could control it. To control it and attract players. Right. Now they don't have that control and you've got teams like Old Miss. Who the hell is Old Miss? Who's buying a team? Who is Missouri? Missouri's not. They're middle tier at best. And they're buying teams. And that's not good. For the big powers that be. Well, and it's funny. Someone said the other day is, you know, uh, it was when Missouri was Missouri went through a little bit of a coaching turnover as well. I think they lost their D.C. and a position coach. I think one of the... D- they went to LSU. Yeah. After the fact of... And someone was like, oh, like, be, be looking out for Winnery to make a move. And I was like, look, Winnery, if you think Winnery went to Missouri to go get coached up, you're mistaken. Right. He did not go to Missouri to get coached up. He went to Missouri to get paid. Right. So at some point, too. And stay home. Yeah, and stay home. And, right. And with their whole state high school. The high school. Basically, state, he started yeah. getting get paid, paid now. Get paid, right. Yeah. Yeah. And who knows where he ends up and what the end game is. And, yeah. I, and there is like a taint with all of this, too, to that degree, that it's just sort of a a pay to play. So, I, you know, I I, I understand your, what your, the points you guys make, and I'm sympathetic to them, and I agree with them. Uh, you, you, you get to a point where people will be, they'll find it distasteful and they'll back away from it and, and won't find it interesting. Now, keep in mind, though, we talk about the unsustainability of it and all that, that it's too disruptive. In baseball, you can s- show up on the team bus, get off, and instead of putting on one uniform, you're putting on a different uniform and you're playing for the other team. So trades can happen in, in that sport, and that seems pretty sustainable. Same day, yeah. Yeah, same day. So um, now that's an extreme, but it happens. Now I'm not saying that's ideal. I don't think you do want that. I think you actually pro- you you probably do want to look at a roster at this in August and understand at some point that's going to be the roster for this team. And if a guy's not playing, he's not going to be able to go show up and play anywhere well, else. Really, it's going to hurt the product, right? That's on the field. It could, yeah. It, but yeah. like as an OU um, football podcast, which we are. Um, it hasn't hit us very hard. We haven't had a coaching change right in the heart of the really craziness of the portal. Um, I mean, think of how rough it was losing Caden Green, who was a left guard slash maybe our left tackle of the future. I mean, what if Jackson Arnold had hit the portal, right? Oh, sure. And you, we couldn't go get somebody right away. We hadn't even named Seth Luttrell yet. Or, or you just don't... You just there's no one left to get that's good enough, right? Yeah. I'm telling you, my whole season, I'm I'm not but kidding. My whole that. season next year, I almost wouldn't care. If Jackson Arnold had hit the portal and, and left this team, I almost wouldn't care about it. Almost. But that depends on who else we would have gotten. We probably would have gotten somebody. And maybe a shortcoming is not that you lose Jackson Arnold, but that you 
ha- have a difficulty because of the constraints of the portal of getting somebody else. So you'd like to be able to get somebody else and you'd like to plug them in because what if Jackson Arnold leaves and he's willing to set the year out? If you go to get someone, you have to set them out. You can't play them right away. So it kind of cuts both ways. The, the set out a year isn't magical to stop them from doing it. It might just come to make it where the product becomes really boring because you're waiting always for that next year for the guys that are going to be able to play and become eligible. So I don't know if that really saves it, the setting out a year. I, but I think... I think- I mean, there's a grad transfer rule that worked perfectly fine when guys like Russell Wilson went from one school to another. He graduated. He can go do that. Jalen Hurts graduated from Bama, came to OU, had his year, didn't have to sit out. That's a solid rule because you've already put your four years in. You've got your degree. It's arbitrary. You should be able. You should be able to leave, but just bounce around willy nilly because this fan base is going to pay you this much this year and the next year. Oh shit! It's this it's fan base is going to pay me that. more. I, I actually have a problem. No, the whole world is not long. That's on capitalism. College football doesn't have to be it's some so, free market so, system. It so doesn't. Why, why would that be good though? I mean, you're 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 saying it worked for a hundred years good, before with no it problems. Good? It was that not good. good up until 2019. It was good for everyone except the players. That's the argument against. It. Well, it I'm not a not player. Good for the player. I'm not a player. And that that well that <laughs> I'm a good super. <laughs> as as and it was good for me. You can take yeah, that, that selfish was position. very good for me. Yeah, and that's and that's the selfish position I think that <laughs> I'll <fans> take it. <laughs> and coaches have taken, and I have just too great a sense of justice. To accept something like that. I justice that's, in quotes. That's gross. It is justice. To say that I want something that benefits me at the expense of someone else, that's injustice. I, I, I think, I think, and I think to, to bring it to the center of where we're at as, as our fan base, you know, we, we can talk about the lackluster NIL dealings with the O-line and everything else, but the way that we've been able to keep a nucleus of players of good, talented players, like a Kobe McKenzie, for example, who doesn't get on the field very much, seems and looks like he's going to be or could be a great, great player like and come in and play in any system. You're keeping guys like that. Brent's doing something right in that, in that you know, area. There's still one more portal window. There is. And, 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 and I, I do and think I that think most kids will be more likely to leave after they see where they're at, but I think that they've used that well, though, I mean, and that that's good because this transitions into the next kind of topic area that I had written down on the agenda. But Brent has done pretty well in the post spring practice portal, where it looks like he's really just shedding guys he doesn't have a place for, and 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 to their benefit to say, hey, you're going to do better somewhere else. You might want to look somewhere else. And then maybe attract someone here. Or yeah, there. he trims. He, he trims to trim fat. some fat and lean up a little. Bit. Yeah, I'm not worried about in that. In general, from the portal, regardless of which portal it is, time of year it is, we have definitely done better in terms of trimming fat and not always getting a, a replacement that's just exponentially better. Right, but it is someone that's of more need and is slightly better. Yes. We're not losing major contributors. But as well, we stack talent, we, we, have see, we will see people hit the portal more. And that's yes. good. And that's actually a good quality. And you probably want to see that. Like, it's an extreme. We were going over it before. Alabama has, what did I say, six or seven entry players. Six. six. And they have 30 going out. But that's because of the coach. But if I looked at Georgia, they're, they're different like that, too. They have many more leaving than, than coming in. OU's like that. And I think that's healthy because you want to say, hey, look, come to OU, give it a chance. If it doesn't work out, we're going to help find you a home. You're not going to be locked in here. We're going to get, we're going to shoot you straight, and we're going to tell you where you stand. Well, you used to have to keep those kids on your 85 roster. Right. Which hurts you. Yes, exactly. And we're right. stuck with them. Right, you're stuck with them. We're stuck with Bray Walker Yeah. for four years that you know never lives up to his billing or, or whatever. Yeah. Now you can you can trim that. You turn it over. say, hey. But you've got to know how to do that. And to your point, Lucas, it is disruptive that maybe we just haven't found that equilibrium. It's disruptive you're you lose it. someone like Caden Green. Well, that's oh, it, it was gonna that start disruptive. for you and but just you 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 know you look at Brent. He's been coaching now for two decades. This is new to him. We're all new to it. The program's new to it. Maybe we just haven't found the equilibrium, or maybe the rules aren't written correctly so that we know exactly how to navigate this. It's very structured and we say here's when we're going to do this transfer thing and we know who we're going to put in that position and we know who we're going to get out of it um 
I understand that you probably need some special provisions for guys who lose their coach, but you can't help me with this. Can you transfer in to Alabama, I guess? Or is it only you can transfer out? Oh, so that's what's crazy right now is Bama can't even add players from the portal because it's been closed from all the other schools already. That's what I was thinking. Right? So they that's, can only they can, messed up. They can only grab Washington or Arizona players or Michigan now. Or now Michigan players. That's or, messed or up. Players that had already entered their name in prior and to found them home. And haven't found rights. But the whole window of opportunity isn't there for these teams. Like Michigan right now. Mm-hmm. Michigan's gonna have no one to go grab. Like who, who? So are the kids in the portal? Are, are the kids in the portal right now? They can still commit to schools, so though. If you enter, kids that are in the portal, enter the paperwork in before the portal, that. Before yeah. the date. So if they're if they're in the if they are which in the portal, they can commit. You, which is is too many entries. Yeah. So you know that it sounds like what we need is less flexibility in the portal. Again, to your point, Lucas, maybe where okay, you lost your coach, and that's unfortunate, but. We don't have a portal opening right now. The portal will open at this point, and you can and everyone. Well, you might lose all your players in spring. Yeah, you don't. Because you have a new. Yeah, like let, yeah, like letting people float around in the, when the portal when in being February. able to not enter yeah. the portal, letting other kids float in this limbo area and try to find a spot no matter what. That's backwards. I would rather them have agents who can be working on their behalf, talking to schools both ways. And lining up where they want to be, coming back to the school and saying, well, here's what my guy's thinking. So understand as you go through spring, spring practice, this is what he's thinking. Rather than, I'm in the portal, I'm not on your team, I am on your team. That That's bad. I mean, didn't OSU run into this problem last year and they didn't have a spring game? Because they didn't have enough players to have on the roster, yeah. Right. Because they had wholesale offensive, like every receiver essentially left. Right. And part of their own fault for not Some being was, re- right. Zept- but then, but. then as a fan, you're like, well, crap, I don't even get to see a spring game this year because of all That's this madness. That's the other, problem. my other main part about it is how much mental stress and and just, re, not monetarily resources, but, but coaching resource-wise, you're having to spend so much time and effort keeping the players that you have you know used to just be we need to talk this guy into not going to the nfl early right because which is a couple of guys right which you're talking at abama you may have seven or eight guys that that could leave after their junior year that to go go in the top five rounds or whatever Mm -hmm. so you have to talk to those seven guys but now literally you're re-recruiting every single player on the roster other than maybe a couple like you know savion bird they probably weren't sad to see him leave like the trimming the fact you're talking about but when you're talking on an 85 man roster, you're having to re recruit. You know, you got seven seniors leaving. Seven. 70 of those yeah. guys you're having to go have a sit down exit interview with. Because you don't even know it. And they might be feeling And they're way. coming to you. And they're saying, saying might have even already talked to. I'm still hearing from the SMU coach. And you, yeah. you're not even a starter yet on the team. You're a backup freaking guard. And, you're, and you got some kid and his parents coming in your office talking to you about. SMU's yeah. gonna give me X amount of dollars. So yeah, well, or it's like Caden Green. The dad's like, well, Missouri. Right. We've already talked to Missouri. They're willing to give him this. Are you willing to match that? And da 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 da. And that's literally one player that we're talking about there. But the getting Stetson to come back, getting Bowman to come back, that was always there because those guys could have gone pro. You're gonna have to do that with the five or ten guys or whatever. But the guy. But having seventy and. Well, I mean, there's there's tons of support staff, but yeah. every one of those parents wants to go sit down with Brent, right, or or with you know Seth Luttrell or whoever their their lead guy is. Maybe not just Bill Beatonbow for the offensive line staff, but they want to sit down with Brent. So how much right. time is he well, taking up any, having to talk to every single kids and every single parent? Look at a guy like trying Hedaway. to re-recruit them. So you got a guy like Hedaway, and you're like, he's not um, a star, obviously, but he's a star potentially of the future. And so when you talk about having to re-recruit or, or retain them, sure, people were talking you're talking to these type of guys who are like, well, my plan for you is to see where you can get to. So is the answer to this contracts? It has, I think it has to be. I think there has to, I mean, to your, uh, that's a really good I mean, point, it's Lucas. Kind of, it's, it's, it's a really good, with a buyout. It's a really, yeah, with a, with a buyout. Says, look, if you want this player, if you want to get you're out forcing, into this deal. You're forcing coaches out, out of the game too. Saban totally retired. Yeah, he's hundred percent. One hundred percent. And Bob, I guarantee you Bob saw all this crap coming. Harbaugh and was done with it. Harbaugh is out. I, I guarantee you because of this crap. Ago, but, yeah. Um 
I mean, they were working Kirby two Smart. Years I bet Kirby Smart's point. not that far from just saying this is this is just junk. Oh, maybe I, I don't. I don't care. I don't. I don't necessarily take that as I. You know, I don't know if I care what Kirby Smart. I think they're just. I think the Windows, the 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 calendar for all this stuff is just piss poor. There's just no way. I think it's beyond that. I think you need. I think you need contracts. I think you need contracts that say, look. Here's the contract that we're willing, and you can be very structured. It can be very like, here's our word OU, and here's our entry level contract for recruits at a certain level, and this is the one you qualified for. Take it or leave it. And this contract comes with stipulations that if someone comes and they want to to buy you out of this contract, here's the buyout clause, and here's the dollar figure that's attached to that. And so everything's very structured, and they know here's what I'm going to get paid. And another school can say, well, if we want to go get whoever it is, Billy Bowman or Petaway or whoever, here's how much we got to pay to get that player. And it works better at a place like OU who, from what we've heard, sounds like they have a very structured payment process with the team. With There's not a lot of guys who are on just crazy NIL deals relative to other guys. And, and don't if, want them to be. And don't want them to be because of the factor of, you know, like Spencer Rattler got two vehicles and right. came resented him essentially. Right. Like, yeah, there's no there's no resentment in the locker room and stuff like that. So I, I and and to your point, Steve, you can structure this stuff in a lot of different ways. Depending on talent and everything, it could be anywhere between a one year deal to a three year deal. Right. I, I don't I don't I know think, if you're a player you can sign a four year deal, but I think it would be one year deals because you move into different tiers as you grow. It or could don't be, grow as a player, or it could be like here's here here are you know different saying? options. Do you, I, I'll give you a well true. You probably from the school standpoint want to do that so you don't constrain yourself and lock yourself in. But you could buy them out of their own contract. Yep. You could say, look here, you know, if you're recruiting the next Adrian Peterson, you could say, look, here's your one year deal, here's your four year deal, and maybe here's your one, two, three, and four year deal. Yep. And and probably it's more like three year deal is the cap. That's all thinking looking around yeah, four the three. Yeah. But it would be like the the payouts get magnificent if you lock into a four-year deal because or a three-year well, either one and you say look we want you to stay here and we know we're going to want you to stay here barring whatever happens and then you can now you have an insurable interest so you go and you can insure that as the school so you say well yeah we recruited adrian peterson and we paid him all this money and now he blew his knee out well that's okay because we have an insurance policy on him well not yeah and i think if you want to pay these college kids like professional players you need to start structuring the way you pay them professionally yeah like all of this is just i mean it's really nilly it's weird. it's a cash grab to what about salary cap yeah is this are you guys thinking like this is individual school numbers or is this a conference numbers i don't know or... it probably has to it'd probably be as the current structure is it'd probably be a conference deal but the conferences could e enter into agreements among each other to say here's what we're all going to go for and so they they can they can agree that this is what we're going to pay. You do run into antitrust issues, though, with that pretty quickly. Is there is there a benefit to, say, Texas, Florida with no uh, income tax? Is, Absolutely. Do they benefit from that? Absolutely. Also, cost of living. But they're benefiting if, from that now. If your salary yeah. cap is... $20 million. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Whatever, there's a benefit. Is a, Are players like, well, I'm not going to go to USC because the cost of living in California is double what it is in Oklahoma. So, and the taxes. So my my money will go further in the state of Oklahoma. I can have absolutely. I can have a, a three thousand square foot house as opposed to a eight hundred square foot apartment in L.A. So I'm going to choose Oklahoma over USC. Yes, the, it, absolutely. Taxes will play into it, and all of those it costs of living and everything. It'd be a big detriment to California in particular. Um, I don't know who else would be really that's a major player in uh, in college football how do you handle ohio a little bit Miami, like the Miami, kick, Miami, how do you handle Miami, like the Miami, kickbacks yeah. and stuff of oh, like florida doesn't have the they don't have state no but it's still but it's it's expensive. Expensive. Oh, yeah, it's like for example like the the georgia kid who went to usc this last year and usc basically funded the the massive apartment that he's in bear alexander. yeah bear alexander like do you do you limit the the kickback situation where it's or do you have deals outside of the contract well, that you have deals outside of the contract now. That, that's yeah, you, know, you do. Yeah. So that's that's in, that's what nil is. The, nil is that, right. and that's really what it should be. And unfortunately, from OU's perspective, we're going to be on the outside looking in for a lot of those mm -hmm. because we it, don't have a lot of people. We don't have a big market. Right. And if you're in Austin, you have a much bigger, more lucrative market. If you're in 
Miami or Southern California, that's an offset for those high cost of living is you're in a tremendous market yep. with more marketability. And you can't, yeah, some you, degree, you can't go put depends. some kid up in a penthouse in Oklahoma City. And, so I would, but, I would but, have, you can, but you can market them at the same time because if you're Baker Mayfield, go back to that world, he's pretty damn marketable out of Oklahoma. And he could he could represent national brands. He could be on TV right. all over the. But, so I, like that's what, but I think that's right. what NIL was supposed to be. Yes, but we're just going to get to the point where every player gets paid one one form or another. And then if you're a personality or a Heisman person and you're doing other commercials, then you get that money on top, which is what NIL was supposed to be. Supposed to be in general. Right. In the first place. You're generating right. your own revenue. So that's through fine. Ads right. and your, your, your market. Your your market you like this because you're yeah. Baker Mayfield. But as a school, you can at the same time. But Baker is making X amount of dollars. Because they period. are contributing. And that's the problem that everyone should have with the, the current structure with NIL, I think, is that you're not exactly connecting value with uh, worth. And so you, you've got a guy that may be producing a lot at a certain school that brings in a lot of revenue for it. But if they're not good at NIL, and OU might be in this situation, that's actually my, my topic area I thought we were going to get into, you're not actually paying them for the value they're creating because your market's small. Well, if it's just across the board, every player gets the same amount. And that, then if you make on think, top of that, you make on top of that. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe, but probably not because that's already breaking down. That's what we're, why we're in the world we're in is the donors want to pay for a top recruit or a top transfer, they don't want to pay for just whoever. They they don't want to just an across the board fixed salary for everyone who shows up and, and makes the raw. They want bang for their buck. They want they want buck. they want the yeah. return. And that's a, that's something I was going to say earlier. It's, okay, what if you have yeah? What if you have then a you have a salary cap for your team for eighty five players, and however you. You or well, that's collective probably decide how you try to, to make it. It wouldn't be a collective. Money. It'd be the university. I'm just saying, however, you're going to disperse the $85 million over 85 players. Well, then that's up to your coaching staff and whoever else. And you, maybe you're paying a defensive tackle $10 million sure. and a quarterback $10 million, And then yeah. you're short everywhere else. But that's a level know. playing field. But that's a level playing field. Yeah. Where it's nowhere close to that now. No. And then you've got, you've got schools with specific ties like. You know, Caleb Williams did a beat steal because Dr. Dre is a USC guy. There's a building named after Dr. And that'll always happen. Andre Young, that is music an academy, all USC's at, at USC, right. the building. And then you've got Phil Knight at Oregon where whoever the best quarterback is in the country had the same, some incredible one year, let's say. And then Phil Knight's like, hey, you come be the face of Nike. We can pay you $5 million to be the face of Nike, which right. really... He's you're paying him to go to Oregon, right? Like, that's what that's sure. what it is. So it won't be fair. It never will be. Yeah, it never will be, and it never has been. Keep that in mind. It never, never has been fair. Exactly. And it always won't be fair. And the still team, the teams different. that have the teams that have historically been good will continue to be good more times than not because of and, and the here, discrepancy. And here and this will tie in my topic area that I that I is OU failing in NIL. And so let me start that by saying. The, the OUs of the world, the Alabamas, to some degree the Texas, Georgia, teams that have had perennial success, have giant fan bases, love their programs, have been resting on the laurels of the fact that they are who they are. They haven't had to do this stuff. Now they're having to do it in this competitive world with NIL, and they don't like it. But they're going to have to pony up and do this if they want, and, and it probably is a cannibalization of donations that used to go to the school that now need to go to the players if they want to compete in that world. Because you've got NIL that is designed to be, we're actually paying you for marketing or whatever you're producing. But in actuality, what this is, is fan bases that want to pay for players versus those that don't. Oklahoma State just does not have the fan base to support an athletic or a football program the way Oklahoma does. Oklahoma fans have had the luxury of not having to pay for it directly or at least not to the players in all these years if they want to continue that legacy they're going to have to start paying for it and they're going to have to start upping their game oklahoma state if they want to compete is going to have to do the same thing the bad news for oklahoma state is they just don't have the breadth to compete probably with oklahoma i think the current experiment that's going on that we're all watching firsthand is 
I think the OUs, the Georgias, the Bamas, for the most part, are trying to put their team together with a standard way of putting it together and piecing in missing parts through the portal. Yes, yes. We don't know if that's the best way to go now versus Mm -hmm. what Missouri, Ole Miss, even Oregon a little bit is trying to do where they're just throwing money at players, building these rosters. We're going to see which one works. Well, it's a classic story of disruption. It's you have an incumbent industry that goes down a path and it's successful forever, and then all of a sudden there's a new invention, a new technique, a new something, and these upstarts can come at you from nowhere and they're competing with you. And you've got to figure out a way to fend them all. Well, a and spent the last four years trying and it was a complete failure. It was. So the first example of everybody saying they're going to try this and see what happens, they've had a, a full cycle of players at this point in four years. Yeah. And it didn't do them any good whatsoever. And Colorado's didn't work it last takes year for them. more than just getting the money. player there now and get it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. If rewind the clock, and let's say that a young Nick Saban leaves LSU and goes to A&M at the start of this NIL era. How lethal would that be? Because you both have the coach as and, well as and the, the money, money and the money to go get the guys. Exactly. Which may actually we we've seen that experiment. It's called Alabama, and we already saw it play out, and it probably plays out exactly like Alabama. It's just now it's above board, and you get to see the transactions a little bit. Kind of. How much worse would it have been with a cult behind it too? Then it would have been pretty <laughs> messed up. So, I think I think OU is failing at, at this point. Is LU failing? That's I think I think OU is failing. If you wanted to give the if you want to make it black and white, a pass or a fail, as of right now, you're failing because to Jay Jay, your point, we're trying to approach things in way too much of a standard fashion of the good old days of college football. I love culture. I love building a a brand that's built on integrity and on a foundation of, you know, doing things above board. And I'm not saying go do things that are not above board, but if people are throwing money and they're getting guys, and not only that, we have the coaching staff. I have all the confidence in the world. If we go get some of these guys that are out there that are getting getting paid at Ole Miss, we're going to be able to develop them into a better product than what they were, and we're going to be a better team because of that. So, and we're not doing it. And the offensive line is a perfect example. I understand doing everything and making th- make, making everyone in the locker room happy. There's got to be better ways to make everyone happy while continuing to better your roster. Be competitive with I mean, some many, of these guys. I don't. I don't even know if another one can say this, but Guyton's most likely a first round pick. And how many offensive line coaches have back to back? Yeah, I'm not. It's not. Even, but it's not but, a knock on. It's not a knock on. No, 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 no. I'm saying no. But with that, we can't and we can't get these elite tackles to come here. Like, where's the disconnect? It's. It can't just. It's be the. the it's the it shiny. It's the shiny object that is new and everyone is looking at, versus the old. The old thing that that we know is proven and we know works. And beating Bo and his his uh, development, right? The, these offensive linemen are going and they're talking to each other and it's saying, "Well, freaking Caden Green just got X amount of dollars at Missouri. What do you think I'm worth?" And here's the number I want. And OU's not paying that. So, again, I know there's there's some standard of relationships that have to be maintained within a locker room, but at the same time. You've got to stay competitive. We also and Steve, wonder, you brought it up before last season. If you don't, you do run the risk of turning into Nebraska. Well, so, I, you know, people are concerned with, okay, we don't want to pay a million dollars to a kid who hasn't proven it yet, right? And you'll you'll piss off the other offensive linemen in, in your room that aren't getting paid. Well, you can counter that with, if you're not bringing in the best players you can bring in, and yeah, these kids might be pissed off that they're, these other new guys are making a million bucks and they haven't proven it yet. Um, that's probably better than losing five games. Next year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I think the whole team would rather be like, okay, I'm irritated with how much you're getting, but we won 11 games this year because you guys were here versus 
where we didn't pay you and you're not here and now we're seven and five. But what about recruiting Portal or high school, the type of kid that's not as short sighted as, oh, they're going to pay me a million dollars to come play for them this year, but the coaching staff isn't going to get me to where I need to be because I'm only going to be a third round pick next year in the NFL. When if I go to an Oklahoma, I'm going to take less money up front, quote unquote, to play in college, but I know he's going to coach me up because his track record is impeccable and I'm going to be a mid to late first rounder instead of an early third rounder. And the difference in that in the NFL for that, for the, well, not necessarily the first contract, but your signing bonus is pretty, is significantly larger, Uh but you, you starting off there and then being able to prove that you're worth more late, like an Orlando Brown. If he, if he, where'd he come from? Where was he committed to Tennessee? Was he committed to Tennessee before he came here? Yeah. Late. We got him, we got him signing day. So he goes to Tennessee and said, and just is, a really good guy in the SEC, and he's a Never late know. second, early third rounder yep. because he didn't have the coach to do it. Instead, he comes to OU. He's a first round draft, or no, actually, he fell in the draft, which was crazy, right? Because he well, proved he his weak. He proved his yeah. He he, he couldn't like the word he couldn't bench couldn't bit, he couldn't. Bench. But he proved himself really quickly in the NFL and got that big second contract. But he had the coaching base to start with, as opposed to go into a school that could have given him more money up front and not and been just short sighted in the yeah. fact of I do think the coaches the coaching should matter. Are, but sh- I do think the coaches are shifting in that in terms of I think they're starting to recognize if you want to boil it down to the culture, but the type of player we need to get here yeah. is that kind of player. And some players, you know, they're already young. It's it's hard to to look past that I'm 18 and I can have a million bucks in my pocket right now versus three years from now. But that's the that's the that's then you have a rental structure that's yeah. involved and yeah. Because there's a long there's a long game to be played. Yeah. And I think OU's playing the long game. And I, I appreciate that. You run the risk though of because you're trying to play the long game, if you miss. You could lose in the short game and never get there. And never get never get never get a chance to play the long game. Yeah. yeah. Because you go and have two bad seasons in the SEC. You're the done. big names are not going to look at you anymore, yeah. and it's going to take an act of God to change or a change in coaching or a change in coaching and, and everything else to get you back to where you want to be. And I so, think you're right. I think the coaching staff is hanging their hat on what Lucas is saying about we are going to develop you and all of that, and that's good. You want the right locker room. You want the right fit. You want the guys who are our guys and are bought in. You don't want the guys that are just pay for play. You don't want a lot of the guys that A and M got, quite frankly. Yeah, they are but, a prime example. But you do want guys who know their worth and are worth something at the same time. I want to work. Got to be willing to pay up for the guys that are worth something. So I don't know if they're losing the game of NIL yet, but I have my worries. One of the things that I had jotted down, and this was maybe more true a week ago, as it seemed to be transpiring, is is OUX losing its mind, and it looked like everyone on X Twitter was just losing their brain and so freaked out about how bad things were and it was just awful. And I was going to push back against that a little bit. Um, but maybe they're right. I don't know. Maybe maybe things are really bad. We ran a poll to see where we are in the offensive line game because I think that's our point of biggest concern. And the majority was in we should be moderately concerned about it, moderately high concerned. Um, high, it was low, moderately low, moderately high, high. I think... Where were you, Connor, when you voted? Moderately high. All of us were moderately high. All of us were on yep. the same page as far as that goes. And that was the majority. You had some high, you had some low. I don't know. Who's saying low? See, I think the NIL thing is interesting because I feel like so much of the team is in place to be super, super successful that I really only feel like we're missing on NIL in one position group. I agree. Right? right? Mm-hmm. So if, if it wasn't so glaring... If we, if Caden Green was still here, we've gotten the North Texas kid and somebody else. I, I would probably be okay with where NIL is to a certain degree because we got a really good wide receiver yeah. um, to supplement our team. Um, we've got a really good defensive end with a lot of sacks to come in and help off the edge. Um, it's just personally, I think the offensive line is a difference of. I mean, up to like 
maybe five wins. I'd, I mean, there's well, be a five game difference in offense. Be, oh, as of our offensive line. I mean, off, offensive line's a critical, critical area, and we saw it in the bowl game. And we kind of saw glimpses of how good we could be if we just get the right offensive line, a good offensive line, much less a great offensive line. I was going to say, to maybe be a homer take on it a little bit, that I think we have no shortcomings aside from offensive line. But offensive line is a concern. I think it's a work in process, so let's wait and see. Let's see where we get to in the spring, in the transfer portal, in the spring, and then obviously through the summer. It's going to be a concern if we're in game five and we don't feel like we've established an offensive line. Well, I mean, if Seth Luttrell wants to go back to the air raid, he's not going to have a choice but to have a good offensive line. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. or everything's going to be really quick. Right. I mean, if in which is what we've been bitching about for two years mm-hmm. is these little short passes, dump off routes that go for nominal amount of yards. It's if Seth Luttrell wants the offense that we think he wants, anything less than a... a playable and I, I say playable in the sense of an SEC playable offensive line because those dudes on the other side of the ball are not messing around with any of these teams like yeah they will work you out and they will work out a poor offensive line pretty quickly um we we've got it we've got to be good now go ahead I mean what what the worst part of all this to me is thinking of how we looked at the offensive line this year and I don't think we were very good and we played against a complete crap schedule. When we talked about going into this year, we all had OU nine and three, ten and two, you know. And then after we went through Texas, we're like, oh, now we're eleven and one. But our schedule was garbage this year. And uh, we're big twelve defensive lines are nothing. And we're playing the complete opposite next year in a very tough schedule. The, but I the think second hardest schedule in the country by I, by uh, most accounts. And I think our line. offensive yes. line is taking a step back off of a ga- off of a season that I don't think we were very good to begin with. I I can probably give this a, a C for last season because we really couldn't run the ball until a little bit towards the end. Now we did our pass protection was pretty good. I give it a B minus, but that's I mean C plus B minus. I think pass protection was really good. Pass yeah, protection pass was good, but we couldn't we, run it out. We needed right. right, yeah. And obviously, if we had ran it even you know twenty percent better, it would have even opened up the passing even more. Yeah. So if we go from a C plus B minus this year to a D plus C minus next year, but the competition is going is twofold. We are screwed. I mean, we're talking yeah. like you yeah. said. If the difference in in paying, a, you know, to get some of these higher office linemen, if the difference is two million dollars across five guys to get you five more wins, why oh, why are you not putting that up? Money it, you've ever that's seen exactly you're right. right. Yeah. Because the difference in going. Eight and four or seven and five with the first year in the SEC or going oh. nine and three, ten and two, those three or four game difference is worth more than two million dollars up front. Brent Venable's career. I mean, that you even getting to an SEC championship game is worth millions of dollars just in revenue, you know. Much less what it pays in dividends right. on the road. So why yeah, I don't even think the monetary value is there. It's just everything else that comes. And we're talking it's everything to get really good, like say Two year starters at a school that was a four star. If you can get that guy for half a million, you add four of those, that's two million bucks. I mean, yeah, I don't have two million bucks to give them, but it, someone does. Someone does. Someone does. That's the difference in the three lo- the that's money is there. Three money. losses. Why is that not happening? It in and, and that that is what's frustrating. It's almost like you worry that somebody if that's true, if that's true, right. don't know if and that's those numbers are just all what, just what we're hearing, what we're type hearing right. type stuff. And and it, it, there's probably truth where it is but it's the truth is probably obviously something different than what we're hearing and what we're supposing but where there's smoke there's fire i like to say and i said it's a work in process but they need to understand this at the university at the coaching staff because ou needs to be working on this and ou doesn't have the cachet some of these other schools have your window of opportunity is very small it is very small and you don't have you can't just strut your way in and say well we're like georgia can and say, this is what we're trying to do, or name a school that's got a great offense, we've got to pony up a little bit I mean, to get the guys we need to get. Brent has to feel that pressure. I would think so. I mean, he has to know. And that reality. He, he That's what I'm scared about, though, the reality. Go, I think he knows he can't not go 7-5 next year. I don't, I, think, I don't think Brent even looks at that side of the ball. I think he... I think he well, I worry, that's bad. And he said, I've locked up Stutzman, I locked up Bowman, We've got 
Uh, Woody. We've got Woody back. We've Eaton. got Gentry back. We've got all these guys are back. We need to supplement a couple defensive line guys, which they did. And then I've taken care of my job. Well, I hope the, he didn't realize. Uh, I, if he so thinks I, about it, that, it seems involved. like that's what it is. Well, and if he says that's his job, that's not his job. <laughs> so we listen. His job is to secure the rock. I agree. So I'm just telling you what it feels. I like. listen to a lot of the recruiting analysts and a lot of the, the the local radio guys and local podcasters and everything. And this is what worries me. They all say the same thing. They're not worried about a Bill Beanbow offensive line, and I'm just I don't know. Why they all say that? Because I, I don't trying to get rid of the guy for three years, Jay. I don't year in and year out. Yeah, see, <laughs> you're a doubter. But year in year, I don't see this elite Bill Beanville offensive line. And all they keep talking about is Guyton was a three star defensive tackle. Turn look at him. Look at him now. He's going first round. But, but he like a first round offensive tackle. But the Our truth is, line wasn't that but elite. We our offense was very good. Our offense was very good. And that's with the fact that I think we had a bad offensive coordinator. And I think we're going to upgrade that, or there's a good chance we will be upgrading that. I think you look back at the struggles in the run game and all these other things. How much of that is Levy? How much of that is a guy who just was not good in that position? So I that's maybe a homer take. That's, that's a, a source of optimism. The other thing that I want to push back against everybody losing their mind out there and OU Twitter and everywhere else is... How much of this is fans that are just not used to OU being in a conference with as many contenders as we're going to have and will and do have in the SEC? And I, I say they need to remember back to the early Big 12 days when it was a top, it was the top it was conference. The best conference. It was by yeah. far the best conference. And OU was more than holding its own in that conference. It was stacked from top to bottom. Nobody came close to that conference. So it is possible, but you had a lot of good competitors in that conference. We've had a series of, I mean, basically a decade where it's hard to find a third competitor in the league. You're really stretching to find that fourth competitor for sure. Um, so I guess I feel like Lucas. I, I don't know that the offensive line was very good last year, and it seems like it's going to go backwards. Even a hair, or even if it's just the same, just because they don't have even if it's just nobody is the same as returning as guys. it was. From last year. I don't think that's good enough. I think it's a legitimate season. worry. I absolutely agree. I totally don't disagree with it's that. I mean, it's it's both. But there's yeah, nothing that's going to change our mind until if we this get... this line was coming back to the Big 12, it, it, there is... Yeah, if we were back in the Big 12 next year, I would not be nearly as concerned. But I'm not saying that. I would saying be. Yes. I don't care what the stats said this year. This was... You said this offense was great this year. But you'd be concerned. It had Big moments, 12. and we had, a, we had three or four really good games that kind of offset... The, the crappy games, like Cincinnati, Essen, like we had bad Everybody does, output. Though. Everybody has those. We, we, we still At were, Oklahoma, we've had years where we didn't score less than 38 a whole season. We get, we, I if mean, you're going to compare us to the most elite years that we've ever had, you have to know what that's the back up good. And that's legitimate. and it, it, Or at least excellence is but the, And the that's best. also against a really crap schedule. So we had a, a, a quote-unquote great offense numbers-wise against – Terrible, even in all terrible competition, which adjusts for the level of competition, we were ranked really high. Yeah, but that's, again, that sounds like some math nerd crap. I well, math nerd or not, I would agree that it's kind of like looking at Dylan Gabriel and saying, "Yeah, his numbers are great," but I'm, I'm telling you, he's only an above average quarterback at best. He's not that great, so I'd have to agree. Yeah, there, there's something to be said about that. Um, so I put aside the doom scrolling and did a little math. You'll love this. Luke. No, great. Um, this is what I need in my life. And the thing that we need to think about is this is this is more to the the idea of, oh my God, Ole Miss just got another guy. Oh my God, Texas just got another guy. All teams are going to fill out their rosters. Everybody's going to have eighty five scholarship players plus others. All talented players will go somewhere, and they all can't come to OU, obviously. And what matters is relative positioning. So, are you getting better or worse compared to your competition? So. I think on this front, OU is getting better. I think OU is ascendant. So I looked at, I went to 24-7, and I said, I, I looked at their team strength, their composite team strength rank for 2023. OU was ranked of the SEC sixth. We were right behind LSU and right af- ahead of Florida. Now, you had some teams that definitely outperformed in that area and others that underperformed. Texas A&M was number three in total team strength. They obviously underperformed. 
Alabama, number one, Georgia, number two, uh, A&M, Texas, LSU, Oklahoma, Florida, round out the top seven. So where are we in 2024? I then looked at what the 24-7 numbers are for the entire recruiting class coming in and the transfer portal of, of, t- of players coming in. Now, this doesn't include anybody we're losing or anyone else is losing. So understand that when Alabama is second in this, this doesn't count the fact they're losing maybe 30 players. Mm-hmm. OU is sixth in that as well. However, when you look at the relative positioning, OU improves then if you just take where we were in 2023 plus the changes for 2024 incoming and everyone else's pluses coming in, we move up from sixth to fifth for what it's worth. So the Auburn makes a big jump. They made a really big jump, and, and their, their change is really big relative to OU's. Some other teams, and it makes sense, like Georgia, they actually barely improved. Alabama, even with the, they're just looking at who's coming in. They're not looking at the fact they're losing all these. They went down quite a bit, and that's because it's tough, tough to stay at the top. It, they're, you're not going to mm. improve on near perfection very much. So relative positioning-wise, OU's very strong and, and one of the top five teams in the conference going into it based on this team composite. Now, that'll adjust for who we're winning and who we're losing, but again, I'm going to say that we're not losing much for what we're getting in. Other teams are, if if anything, we're going to be, we may be ahead of Alabama after, after it's all said and done yep. when the 2024 comes out because of who they're going to lose. You look at Ole Miss, they're burning it up in the transfer portal. They did not do very well in recruiting. They have to do well in transfer portal. So I went back and looked at what is the average player that they're win- they're they're gaining and what is the average player that they're losing because they have a lot of transfers out as well. They have 15 incoming transfers. Their average r- number of their 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 value in the 24/7 metric of their algorithm is 89. What's important is to understand that there's 16 players that they're losing. They're gaining 15. The 16 they're losing, their average is 86. Mm-hmm. So they're barely gaining anything it's almost just a wash now they may say and it may be true that they're gaining people they want they're losing trimming fat maybe all that's true i don't know but in the sweep of how 24 7 looks at it they're barely just treading water or just above treading water is that is that 24 7 composite just their high school ranking or is it go through college too because yeah, that's some of the guys updated through college. Stuff, I believe those are updated. I think to say if a guy college. if a guy was a three star and then he played two years at right I, at LSU and then he transfers to Ole Miss, right? But he had you know sixty tackles and three right. interceptions. Great, right? Yes. I think it's updated. Okay. I think it's part of their because they they work that into their gotcha. team composite ranking and all that. We'll see what twenty twenty four looks like, but I'm a little optimistic about you know where it stands. I think there's work to be done. No doubt about it. And I worry we don't have what it takes and are not willing to pay what it takes to get what we need to finish the job. We clearly are going to be stacked at some positions, but we need to be stacked everywhere if we're going to compete at the level we want to compete at. Because the teams that we compare ourselves to, the benchmark, they're stacked at every single position for sure. Well, we've got got just a little bit more time left. I thought what we could do is just recap the locks of the week. The realest deal locks of the week. So the locks of the week, the realest deal locks of the week are sponsored by Five Star Concrete, David and Josh, a local business servicing the metro area. From patios, sidewalks, driveways, shops, and more, call them or text them at 405-306-3014 or look them up on Facebook at Five Star Concrete. So guys, we have not done David and Josh very proud. We we were one in and three in the championship game to round out the year. I have our final numbers for 2023. And I've got actually a kind of interesting, funny comparison to last year. So for the year, our champion would be Connor, who won 56% of his games, 29 and 23. Congratulations, Connor. Thank you. Thank you. Right on his heels was Lucas, at 54%, 28 and 24. One game back. And then we've got Jay at 25 and 27. That's 48%. That's that's below even, buddy. 
but that's a lot better than 21, 30, and 1. That's 41% for me in fourth place. However, math doesn't always do it. It doesn't always work. It is like the math just doesn't lie. But what's interesting is so we were, as I read them off, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's basically the opposite order of where we finished last year. So last year, I was first, Jay was second, Connor and Lucas were tied <laughs> for third. <laughs> So overall, in two years of doing college football locks of the week, we are 184, 203, and 1, 48%. Oh, my God. Man. Not one of us has a winning record. It's going to mean a lot more next year, though. It is going to mean more. more. It better mean more. We better try harder. I don't know. Let's try harder starting this week. And I feel really good about this because I tell you what, if there's one thing. I may not be good at, at picking football college wise, but NFL, I think I've got it down. I think I got it figured out. Got it. So I got two locks of the week. We're in the in the conference championships. I don't know if you're familiar with with how NFL football works. I know Dean Blevins that's so. <laughs> but Harbor um, versus Harbor on the Super Bowl next year. <laughs> yeah. But we we have um the the Baltimore Orioles, is that what it is? <laughs> we have we have Go. the in it. Baltimore. The Colts, yeah, the Cub Baltimore Colts are playing. So we have the NFC and the AFC championship games. Um, let me just start by who are you guys for? Not who you're picking. Who are you for? Do you care? Who are you rooting for? Baltimore or Detroit. That's who you're for. That's who I'm for. All right. I got to agree. Yeah, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I would say just Detroit just because, you know, they're never there. I'm going to yeah. say not tired of Kansas City. Not, so. Kansas, not, not Taylor Swift. Yeah, not okay. Taylor Swift. Although we are cutting into some OU players there, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Lake Chiefs, Bell. the Chiefs probably lead the league in OU OU players. Like three, right? Three. Creed, four, right? Bell, Creed, and Winchester, well, Wanya Morris, and Wanya oh Morris. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So maybe we. Four guys. But right. Baltimore's got the Holy Mark Andrews, mm-hmm. who's going to be back this week. And ben He's going back. Oh, this he's week. going back. This He's week. going back this week. Ben Powers. Ben Powers. Yeah. Yep. And then. Uh, 49ers and Lions, I don't think they have. 49ers got uh, Braden Willis. Willis. Yep. Yep. Is he, is he on the. And Trent oh, yeah. Williams. He played. Yeah. Yep. Trent, Trent Williams. Williams. Yep. Trent Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Trent Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm working against that. The Lions, so. the Lions, I don't know if they have anybody. I don't think they do. Sounds like they don't. I saw Baker. Ba- Baker took a picture with somebody that looked familiar. It was post game, and, you know, they go greet each other. He went and took a picture with somebody that looked like, I, I can't remember who it was. Honestly, he, he, he didn't look like he played in the game, but maybe it was a backup. But yep. I don't know off the top of my head. Yep. It might have just been a former player from somewhere else. From- well, regardless of all that, I've got I've got my picks. You guys ready? You got your picks? Yep. All right. I'll go first. I've got Baltimore giving three and a half, and I like Detroit getting seven. I might have the same. Yep. I, I picked the same. I actually think... I think the Lions have a decent chance of winning that game. I do too. I think they straight up could um, win that game. So I, I think seven is relatively generous, but um, I, yeah. I think I think Detroit has a good chance on on Sunday. I would like it a lot more six and a half, but I'm going to go uh, San Francisco in that game. I've got wow. more in the first game, San Francisco, mainly because I don't think Detroit's defensive backs are very good, and. I have all the faith in the world in Kyle Shanahan and play calling. That guy, he's, I mean, he's up there with, with Lincoln on offensive coordinating. The guy, he runs so many different sets. It's, just, it's really hard to tell what play co- is coming. Um, even as an end zone analyst, I think I would have a hard time with hmm. it. Is Debo back for that game? Is Debo Samuel's back? He's not practicing. He hasn't practiced yet. So it's a blow. We'll see. Jay, what do you got? Um, gosh, I don't like that we're all on the same page. Doesn't bode well. Take the Swifties. Um, no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> so I do. I do think Baltimore will win and cover. Um, I I think the Lions kind of ran its course. I, I'll, I'll go San Fran. All right, all right. So we're we got one game that would you land it Baltimore and two and two on the other one. Yeah. Well, that'll that'll be interesting. So, um, don't let us down, Ball. Can't wait for that two and six record. Yeah. 
<laughs> there's there's some fans that, that listen from Baltimore and Where's the Super Bowl? they're really disappointed. Where's the Super Bowl at this year? Vegas. Uh, Vegas. Oh, it's Vegas. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So San Francisco is looking sweet yeah. for so that. So if you're out there and you want to bet, you probably put your money on Kansas yeah. City. <laughs> yeah. And then just don't bet flip, the other yeah, flip a coin. I have a coin on the other. I think that uh, the Detroit San Francisco game is the over looks really good. I don't. What is the? I don't have it handy, but oh, uh, I'm guessing. Uh, Great. That's a great question. We should probably be prepared for that. Uh, when you I think Detroit's one of those teams that just... It's 50 and a half. Hmm. I like the over in that. I the think, they've, over I think they've kind of gone as far as the, what their season is. Detroit. Detroit, yeah. I, yeah. I honestly don't know that they should have made it past last week. I, I'll be honest, I don't. But I, mean, and I don't think really Tampa's that good. It, yeah, it, but... Tampa's defense. I mean, Baker's never gone somewhere where he's had a great defense. No, I mean yeah. Baker threw for three hundred plus yards, and everyone's like trashing the guy yeah. on Twitter still. It, yeah, and he, done. He His defense great. gave up like three eighty yard touchdown drive, and, and just like in the third like, quarter, like they weren't even. I mean, and the week before he would have had four hundred fifty yards. Yeah. if they hadn't had a seven drop. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and there were drops in this game too. But yep. yeah, no, it was it was lost on defense for sure. I think he earned himself a good contract though. That's good. Good, good, good for, for him. That's yep. awesome. I love that. And he, and Mike, he Mike earned Evans, it. he earned it going into this year. Mike Evans wanted a new deal, or he wanted to be traded, and they didn't give him either. And so, essentially, when he started playing the season and I watched those games, he would score a touchdown and just, you know, hand the ball to the ref and just walk off, like, not happy, essentially, is what it looked like. He was still out there giving it his all, but he didn't look like he was excited to be there. But by the end of this season, and I heard him saying, you know, Baker's that guy. So, it's cool. It'd be really good if if they can re-sign Mike Evans to play. Because yeah, you saw left that, like that. I think he was the first player in NFL history, maybe, to have – like nine consecutive thousand yard seasons, or or eight. It was something. It was some wild stat, like eleven or something. It it was some number that he had. I think nine in a row or eight in a row thousand yard seasons, and it was he was the first person to do that. Which you would think Jerry Rice would have. Maybe he got injured one of those he, years and it split he up. Made Johnny Manziel. You know? Yeah, tell you that. But it was. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, this that's good. Yeah, no kidding. Um. Well, that's great for Baker, and I kind of wish that. Somehow it could work out, and the same thing would happen for Kyler. I, I would love to see him getting an opportunity where he could get a big next contract out of where he is because I, I think he is underappreciated as well and underutilized. Um, all these guys, I mean, you're talking about guys that, you know, Sam Bradford's a prototypical example of somebody who just never had the surrounding cast that he deserved to show you what he's got. So. If Tampa keeps their OC... This will be the first time Baker's ever had back-to-back offensive coordinator. That's insane. Yeah. That's crazy. That's really nuts. We better wrap it up there. We covered a lot of good ground. We're going to be back hopefully next week, maybe with a special guest. we got a lot more to cover. We'll be covering it through the offseason. Until then, Boomer. Sooner. Sure.